you got increased energy, you start to increase fat metabolism, you increase insulin sensitivity, and this all results in weight loss and correction of your blood sugars. Welcome to the Health Quest Podcast, your guide to God's will for good health. Hello, I'm Dr. Sal, and I've been a practicing doctor and surgeon for well over 30 years. And my goal for each episode is that you'll be able to have your mind transformed to God's design for good health, and in a way, affect the way you eat and the way that you live. If you're new here, we release a new episode every week, and if you enjoy the content, would you please leave us a good review? It really helps our ratings and allows us to reach more people and in turn help those people change their lives. We'd like to thank you for your support. And on today's episode, we'll be talking about gynostema. So let's dive right on in today's HealthQuest podcast. Gynostema pentaphyllum is an herb that grows in the southeastern part of Asia, particularly in the mountainous regions of South China and North Vietnam. It's used in folk medicine as an herb tea, and it's categorized in the cucumber family, although it's, it's really a leafy vine. And the constituents that are in it are very similar to ginseng, which contain phylo, uh, phylosterols. Uh, it has saponins, except in gynostema, it has this japanicide saponins and flavonoids. It's rich in antioxidants and it improves the resistance to DNA damage, which can eventually result in mutations and cause cancer. It contributes to heart health and provides cardiovascular support. And it does that by inhibiting the formation of blood clots. It works to support the brain. Overall, it helps to improve your mood and well-being. It's shown to reduce anxiety and stress. So now, how can it help in metabolic disorders such as type 2 diabetes and in obesity? Well, gynostema uh, pentaphyllum works by two mechanisms. Number one, AMPK, and number two, PTP-1B. So these are two mechanisms, and these are just abbreviations. But the first mechanism is AMPK or AMP kinase. And AMP kinase is an enzyme which is a key sensor regulator of glucose, fat, and energy metabolism throughout the body. The activation of this kinase improves metabolic abnormalities by increasing beta oxidation or the breakdown of fats. So it starts to improve this abnormal breakdown of fat, I mean buildup of fat and actually reverses it so it starts to break down fat to be used as energy. It increases glucose uptake. In other words, it, it gets the glucose out of the bloodstream and into the muscles and the liver where it belongs. And it does this by increasing GLUT4, which is a, a like a little door that sits inside every cell and it gets translocated or gets moved to the plasma membrane where it's like you're putting up a new door in a wall so that it can open up and allow for blood sugar to get into the cells where it belongs. Now, AMPK is actually increased as far as its activity by that hormone that we had discussed before called leptin. Now, leptin is secreted by the fat cells. So the more fat we actually have, the more leptin we secrete. But remember what we talked about this in one of our previous podcasts, that what ends up happening is, is, yes, we put on all this fat, we become overweight or obese. And then what ends up happening is we're putting out all this leptin, but just like putting out too much uh, insulin, we develop a resistance to the leptin. So overeating leads to buildup of more leptin, but over time, we develop a resistance. Now leptin doesn't work, and it doesn't work on the AMPK. We know that insulin is not working because now we're insulin resistance as well. And this is how we develop this ectopic storage of fat. In other words, fat that's getting stored in the wrong cells, such as the muscle cells or in the liver. 
and this is what we've called before in previous podcasts, lipotoxicity. Actually, that's the term that we use when fat gets stored in the wrong places. There are act, uh, actiponins, opponents called damulin A and damulin B, which are found in gynostoma extract. And these have been shown through numerous studies to naturally activate AMPK and deactivate acetyl coenzyme A carboxylase. Now, this acetyl CoA carboxylase is an enzyme that actually builds up fat in cells. So, the, these saponins that are in the gynostema activates the AMPK and deactivates the acetyl CoA carboxylase, which builds up the fat in the cells where AMPK starts to increase beta oxidation or the breakdown of fat. Now, with a restricted calorie intake, elimination of refined sugars and carbohydrates, an implementation of exercise, this combined with gynostema will speed up the fat burning processes in the muscle and the liver and now the insulin pathway can now act appropriately to allow glucose into the muscle cells where it belongs and eliminate it from the circulating blood where if you get an excess accumulation of sugars in the blood it causes ages remember that term that's that's an abbreviation for advanced glycosylated end products or glycosylation of proteins now this is where sugars start to bind to these proteins and then deactivate them. And so when it starts to happen at the cellular level, sure, you're not going to feel any pain. You're not going to have any issues. But over time, as it starts to build up more and more and more, it's like termites eating your, the wood in your house. Sure, it looks fine because you've got you know drywall, so you can't really see what's going up be, behind the drywall. As, as the wood starts to deteriorate, eventually the house starts to collapse. Now at this point, the insulin becomes more effective. So as we start getting these fat cells or fat out of the muscle cells and liver, it allows for insulin to become more effective. It now reduces those blood sugars and we, you know, we're on our way to a, a better healthy lifestyle. This is one of the ways in which gynostema pentaphylum can improve obesity, insulin resistance, or the early stages of type 2 diabetes. Now, that's the one mechanism. So it goes through the AMPK mechanism, which then helps to break down the fat, and it starts to improve the blood sugars. Now, the second mechanism is through another enzyme, which is called protein tyrannase uh, phosphatase 1B or PTP-1B. And this is an enzyme that is a negative regulator of insulin signaling pathway. And what that means, in other words, is that it, it basically, when it's active, it keeps sugar or glucose from entering the cell. So this enzyme, when it's active, will prevent the insulin cascade of events that takes place to you know, get that GLUT4 to the membrane to open up the doors to allow sugar in. It, it, it actually deactivates that whole system. It's almost like sticking a finger or a straw in a grandfather clock, you know, where you got all the wheels turning and, and you know, the springs that are moving up and down to keep everything perfectly timed. And you put a straw or you put like a wooden sliver in there and it stops the whole thing. And that's what activating this enzyme, this PTP1B, will do, and that's how you start to prevent sugar from getting absorbed, and that's how you get the uh, high blood sugars in the, um, in the circulation. So, and the way it does this is that this enzyme dephosphorylates or removes phosphates from the insulin receptor and other enzymes, which then impairs their function. So again, by activating this enzyme, you're pulling these phosphates or phosphorus, which is an element, it's a mineral, and it pulls them off of these enzymes that are supposed to be working. It's almost like me taking the tires off of your car when you're at work, and then by the time you get 
you're on your way home, you find that your tires are missing and you can't go anywhere. And that's what this enzyme does. Well, Gynostemma pitophyllum with its actiponin saponins inhibits or shuts down the activity of this PTP1B or this enzyme, which leads to enhanced insulin sensitivity and improved glucose tolerance. So in one study, they showed where these mice had the PT, uh, PTP enzyme completely removed and these mice also had increased energy expenditure or it increased their basal metabolic rate. So by reducing the effects of this one enzyme, this PTP1B, not only do you get an improvement of the insulin uh, sensitivity so that your blood sugars can now become normal, but it also increases your metabolic rate and increases your energy expenditure. The way that this also results from an improved mitochondrial function, we're going to talk about the mitochondria. It's one of the organelles in the body that generates energy for the cells. And so by increasing your basal metabolic rate, you're basically increasing the function of the mitochondria. So one of the ways to increase this mitochondrial function is from calorie restricted diet that is low in refined sugars and carbs and gets you into a ketogenic state. Now, you know, we keep repeating this over and over and over again, but imagine you take in gynostemma and you're on a healthy diet. You've got increased energy, you start to increase fat metabolism, you increase insulin sensitivity, and this all results in weight loss and correction of your blood sugars. Now, I mean, what more can you ask for? This is, this is leading you to God's path to good health. Got to remember something, folks. God doesn't cause disease in people. We do it to ourselves. And it's happening more and more and more. You start saying, oh, yeah, but look at this child. They were born with this genetic defect and they die at the age of 20. Those are completely different situations, okay? Or you were born without a limb. That's a completely different situation. But you were born with all your faculties and then all of a sudden you're eating garbage out there, which we're talking about modifying and stopping, and we're causing our own disorders. So... So here's, as I said, you know, you reduce your calories, get rid of those refined carbs and sugars. I mean, and this is the action of your relationship with God to be able to say no. Remember, you know, the book of James, it's not just about talking or saying bad things and what you're putting out of your mouth, but it's also what you're taking in as well. I take about 500 milligrams of the, gynos, uh, the gynostemma extract per day. And what I do is I put it in my coffee. I've got a Quasinart coffee maker, so it's a drip coffee. And I put it at the bottom of the filter, and then I put the coffee on top. Well, and then I also put some cinnamon and some of the other stuff in there. So what it does is it, it dissolves, and it goes into the coffee. And so I get 500 milligrams of the uh, gynostemma per day. Now, the research studies... Uh, that were done on individuals that were obese and had type 2 diabetes, they were taking 3 to 6 grams. That's 3 to 6,000 milligrams of gynostemma per day. And it helped to improve um, their insulin sensitivity. So they reversed their type 2 diabetes and then they started losing weight. But remember, you, you can't just take these supplements without changing your lifestyle. So you got to remember that nothing supplants um, uh, the diet and how you eat. Good dietary habits, eating lean proteins, healthy fats, your omega-3 fatty acids like your fish oil, cooking and you're using olive oil. Now, if you're going to cook at high temperatures, use the avocado oil. Use coconut oil as well. Your high fiber carbs, which comes from your, uh, your vegetables and even your low glycemic fruits. Um, again, with the healthy fats, if we go back, I just want to mention your healthy, um, you know, you know, your nuts such as almonds, walnuts, hazelnuts, pistachios. Combined with gynostemma, 
increases fat metabolism, improves insulin sensitivity, increases energy, supports brain activity and mood, and improves the cardiovascular function, protects against free radicals that can cause cancer. Ladies and gentlemen, here's another way to help improve your health and live a healthy lifestyle without having to resort to taking medications. With that, I hope you enjoyed our show. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to leave us a good review and visit our website and social media accounts to connect with us more. If you happen to have any questions about your health regarding this episode, my email will be in the description below and I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. And if you'd like to see any of the sources of research in this episode, it will be available in the show notes and description. Until next time, have a great day and God bless. Thank you.